All right, in the last video, we took a look at how you guys could make your own class. We made a car. And then how in another class that contains a public static void main, how you could create a new car in memory, give it a name, and then access it and use some of the variables inside of it. Now what we're going to look at this video is we're going to look at a little bit more about creating an instance of the car class. So I'm going to add a little bit more here. So I'm going to add a method inside of this car class and this method is very special. This method has the exact same name as the class. So car, car. You'll see here I make it public, which we'll talk about a little later. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go system out, print line, car created. Now, what this method is, is this method is called the constructor. This method will run once and only once when this class is created. And the technical name for created is instantiated. So basically, when we do this line right here, new car, it'll go and make a car and create this in memory, and it'll run whatever code you put inside of the constructor. So just to give us a go here, in our runner, we've got two cars being created. So we should see this happen twice, once for Betsy and once for Bob. So let's give it a run and see if we get that output. And you'll see when we get the output right at the top, right away, car created, car created. Okay, works beautifully. And those are coming from these two lines right here, car created, car created. So once again, that's called the constructor and that's the format of it. And you have to spell it the same name as the class. Now let's take this constructor idea a little farther. I'm going to do something called an overloaded constructor. Now this is going to be a powerful thing you can do with classes. Sometimes when you make your class, you don't want to have to do this. Betsy.license plate, Betsy.position, Betsy.speed, Bob.license plate. I'd like to do something a little different. I'd like to be able to make Bob, but give the information inside of the constructor so Bob can be made with some values preset instead of having to do this manually. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to write this overloaded constructor so it takes in three parameters. It's going to take in the license plate, the position, and the speed. So here we go. I'm going to say take in string, license plate, integer, position, integer, speed. Now, you may think that you have to call these variables the same as the way they're called up here. You actually don't have to, and I'll show you that afterwards, that you don't have to use the same names. But here's what you end up doing. The user's now going to actually be providing three pieces of information when they make a car. And then I do this. I say, hey, please set this car's license plate equal to the license plate variable right here. And so this keyword, this here, confuses beginners a bit. But this means this car that was just made in memory. So it's talking about this dot license plate is referring to that variable. This license plate variable is this one right here, okay? Without the word this. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. I'm going to say position equals the position variable that I was given, and this dot speed equals the speed variable I was given. And you know what I'll do? I'll actually do a little system out here. Car created with overloaded constructor just so we know it's actually happening okay let's close that off and there's my car class now I now have two ways to make a car I can either use this constructor or I can use this constructor now how to use this well let's just go and use it when I make Bob this time I'm actually not gonna say new car I'm gonna say new car bracket and I'm gonna give it some information here and watch the information I'm going to give it. The information, XYZ456, comma, 
And now let me go back because I already forgot what I did. I need to give it a license plate. I just did. I need to give it an integer that represents a position. And then I have to give it an integer that represents the speed. So position and speed. Let's say it's at position 0. And let's say it's at speed 30. So that's what that ends up looking like. Now notice, no red lines works beautifully. Let's say you forget to give it the third thing. You get the red line. And the red line says, no suitable constructor. And it says a little bit of other stuff there. And it basically translates to, listen, here you've given a string and one integer. It scans the car class and goes, there's no constructor that'll let me construct a car like that. I need a string, an integer, and an integer. Or you give me nothing. So let me put that back to giving it the last parameter there. And then I've got Bob made. Now when I print out Bob.LicensePlate down here, and maybe even a little Bob.Speed afterwards, you're going to see the license plate has been set. And the speed has been set to 30, and the position is 0. So let's give this a little run. And genius. Okay, it's been just set in this one line and saved us the trouble of doing something like that. Okay, you're going to see other uses for this as well later on. So once again, constructor, overloaded constructor. Now, how many overloaded constructors can you have? You can have as many as you want. You could have made one that just takes the license plate. Okay, of course, we'd have to change the code here. But you could just do that, and it's just fine. Okay, so you decide as a programmer what you want to put in to the constructors.